All right. Good morning, everyone. This is the Global Watch International, and it is the 3 p.m. worship time in Jerusalem. And we are really happy to welcome Margaret and her guest, Tanya, today for the Malta Watch. So we just want to speak blessing to you today whatever it is that the Lord has given you. We just thank you for this watch. It's been an encouragement to me, just the times that I've met. I'm sure it's the same for everyone. So we just speak God's blessing to you. Just put his words in your mouth and just share with us the things that, that you would like to bless us with today. So it's all yours. Amen. Thank you very much. So Today, as we are doing, uh, we've entered into the corporate prayer calling today, this week. Um, and I want to thank you, Amy, for introducing us. Um, so we're seeking the Lord, not only for Malta and the nations, but mainly also for Israel in this time of dire straits. It's a time of shifting. We really feel it, but we really have to press on and press hard. So I just want to bring this call to the Lord and worship him to direct our hearts how to achieve what Nehemiah has achieved, to work together and build for his kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. And I found this wonderful worship song that um, Amy is going to play for us. Uh, it's called Nehemiah Prayer Song. So before we put it, I, I want to just say, Father, just we want to thank you, Father, for Global Watch, for Fred and Sue. Thank you for all the people that are coming on this watch, Lord. Thank you for Amy that like hosting us, Lord. Open our hearts, Lord God, to what you are speaking us today. How do we go about it, Lord? What are you saying to us today? How do we pray for Israel? How do we pray for ourselves, for our nation? So, Lord, make us sensitive to your Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's hear this song, which I really felt the blessing. Amen. I hope that that blessed you. So now I'm going to introduce Tanya, our guest speaker today, who is going to be um, bringing us what the Lord has put on her heart to um, to speak about today. So who is Tanya? Tanya is Tanya is uh, a teacher in uh, higher secondary. She we have known her for a few years. We also uh, do it in mums in prayer, and um, she's blessed us a lot. So I just introduced Tanya to you today. And thank you, Tanya, for being available to do this. Amen. Hello, good afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to be here. I think my third or fourth time. And it's always on the floor. Hello, Yusa. <laughs> nice seeing you again. Good afternoon, Amy. Good afternoon, and good evening, Angelica, or good night. Good morning, Bonnie. Hello, Corinne. Hello, Diane. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Lena. We've met before. Hello, Monica. Hello, Marcia. Hello, Hovernis. Hello, Elia. Mm -hmm. So, today I want to talk about, or rather, um, I, I am asked to share about corporate prayer. And I'm, I'm thinking of reading from 1 Peter 5 as a foundation for this hour. And then uh, you will find some more scripture. So I'm reading from the TPT version. Unless someone would like to read for us 1 Peter 5. Someone offering to read. One, two, three. Okay, so I'll read myself. <laughs> um, I'm a teacher by profession, so a teacher and a lecturer sometimes, so I have this uh, teacher style. So please bear with me, be patient with me. 
and hello Marcia and bear with me be patient with me because I have a, a feature at site okay so I'm reading from 1 Peter 5 now I encourage you as an elder an eyewitness of the sufferings of Christ and one who shares in the glory that is about to be unveiled I urge my fellow elders among you to be compassionate shepherds who tenderly care for God's flock and to feed them well. For you have the responsibility to guide, protect, and oversee. Consider it a joyous pleasure and not merely a religious duty. Lead from the heart under God's leadership, not as a way to gain finances, the news honesty, but as a way to eagerly and cheerfully serve. Don't be controlling tyrants, but lead others by your beautiful examples to the flock. And when the shepherd king appears, you will win the victory's crown of glory that never fades away. 5. In the same way, the younger ones should willingly support the leadership of the elders. In every relationship, each of you must wrap around yourself the apron of a humble servant. Because God resists you when you are proud, but multiplies grace and favor when you are humble. 6. If you bow low in God's awesome presence, he will eventually exalt you as you leave the signing in his hand. Pour out your worries and stress upon him and leave them there. For he always tenderly cares for you. 8. Do well balanced and always alert, because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roaring lion, looking for its prey to devour. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that you that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of trouble you endure. Ten and last verse, and then after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes. He will set you firmly in place and build you up. And he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. Thank you for listening. I think this is the foundation, the stone, on which we can base the next half hour, 45 minutes. And since it's a small group, we are only um, 15 people. I think we can uh, talk together rather than separate in, in groups. <laughs> and so if you have a comment to say or something to raise up specifically, please feel free to raise your hand digitally or physically. And we will attend to your, your comments and questions. So what is what is corporate prayer and i think that this this paragraph this text we read goes into clearly on what it is and what it is not for me it is like leading a family some of you may be married or sons and daughters of and eventually you will have your own family so you have already experience in leading a family or you can be leading a group or you can be leading at work so i guess everyone has an experience of how to lead and i like this 1 peter 5 the first lines until 11 specifically because it's so encouraging it's a daily encouragement of how we can lead a group and as it says 
we are eyewitnesses of the suffering of Christ. And we are shares in the glory that is about to be unveiled. How do we do it? We are to be compassionate. Compassionate shepherds. My grandmother was a shepherd. And I know that she had a sweet nature. But she protected her flock. She was a woman of rigor. She was disciplined. She was gentle when she had to be gentle. And she was sweet when she wanted to be sweet. But she was disciplined. And she protected her flock. Jesus did the same when he was protecting his flock. Jesus is at our utmost because he gave his life for us. He is the ultimate shepherd who gives his life in redemption for our life. Jesus is the compassionate shepherd who tenderly cares for God's flock and he feeds them well. How are we fed? We are fed by the word of God. Sometimes I am feeling good and Margaret is not and we encourage each other. Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes it's in one day that one is up and the other one is down. So we lift each other up because we have the responsibility to guide, protect, and oversee. So these are very important terms of what our responsibility is. We are guides, we are protectors, and we are overseers. But we do this with joy. We do this with pleasure. We come together and we enjoy and you can see it in us because it's not a religious routine it's not a religious duty it's something which we do and which we enjoy doing and we lead from the heart under God's leadership and we constantly ask God how do we do it? Whether we are playing individually or whether we are playing together, as the word says, where two or three stand together, there I am. We know that the Lord is faithful and he will stand with us. And we lead from the heart under God's leadership. We're not gaining anything financially. But as a way to eagerly and cheerfully serve, we cannot be controlling tyrants. There are too many controlling tyrants, whether in the family, whether at home, whether at school, whether at work, in society. There are too many controlling tyrants. So it's not for us. There are too many and it's not our task. But what is beautiful is that we lead others by our beautiful example. We live together. We meet together. In our case, we meet at least two times, three times a week. We lead by example. In my case, in my experience, what I see happening in this community, I go back home and I reflect and I learn. And I guess that this is how we earn respect because we are leading not by words because words die down. We lead by example. In Maltese we have an expression which is It's two words which means the example pulls things with it. So the example drags. The example which we do attracts 
people to be with us. In the same way, the younger ones should willingly support. In my case, I have been only five years in this community, so I can say that I am younger one. <laughs> and as an HR, it, it's rebellious in me to speak out and talk but in time I have realized that I need to support my leaders and the elders in the community. So this community has also taught me how to follow. Because if I don't know how to follow, I cannot lead. So it speaks to all ages, or rather, to all experiences, whether we are new or whether we are old. It doesn't matter, because if we are old today, it's because we were new before. God resists you when you are proud. And in my case, again, because of my pride nature, my proud nature, the Lord has resisted me several times. Several times. Several consequences, be they emotional, be they financial consequences, be they spiritual consequences. So we all know how the Lord can resist. But, and this is why I love the word. This is why I love Jesus. God resists us when we are proud, but multiplies grace and favor when we are humble. And for me, the word humble is such a big word. Because in society, at least in European societies, we are not taught to be humble. Not at all. So if you are exitous on Spanish, if you are successful in European uh, climate, environment, correct me if I'm wrong, Yuta, but in European, in European society, we are not taught to be humble. We are not taught to say, yes, sir. I don't know in your communities, I don't know how it is in South American countries, in Asian countries, okay, same for Americans. So I need to go against, I need to deconstruct my ideas of what I learned through society, through the academia, I need to go against and I need to learn to be humble, which I try to do daily. And how do I learn how to be humble? If I cannot learn it at school, at university, through the media, I experience humbleness in watching my leaders in my community. So in my case, I watch the leaders here, in our case it's Margaret and Jay, and I learn how to be humble. And humble is a very fine, very, very fine concept. Because I see humbleness in the secular, but it's not the humbleness of Jesus. It's not the true humbleness. It's not the dying. It's not the giving your life. So in reading the word and in the community, I learn what humbleness is. Then it continues, the word continues. Humility and faith, verse 6. If we, bow low, if we bow low in God's awesome presence, which we do in worship, He, the Lord, will eventually exalt us. Many a times, we go through difficulties. The last couple of years have been extremely difficult. 
I would say, since I became a Christian, I have had several difficulties, yet the way I overcome them, each time I learn to overcome them differently. And verse 7 speaks to me a lot. For people who suffer with anxiety, for people who worry too much, like me, <laughs> I keep this in my mind. Pour out. So I say to myself, Tanya, pour out all your worries and stress upon the Lord and leave them there. So I am not allowed to talk about my worries. I am not allowed to take them back. Once I leave them there, once I give them to the Lord, I cannot even let my mind think about my worries, about my stress. Because the Lord always tenderly cares for me. And the Lord has done this repeatedly. We have seen this repeatedly, all the time. Today it's me, tomorrow it's Margaret, the day before it's Ray. The other time it was Yusa. So we all, we all have worries. We all have stress. And it's amazing that how, when we give them to the Lord and we leave them there. This word is fantastic. Leave them there. Leave them there. For me, it speaks a lot. Why? Because before I used to give it to the Lord and take it back. Maybe I hear a song. I take it back. Maybe I see a picture. I take it back. Someone asks me a question. I take it back. And it shouldn't be the case. Because once I give it to the Lord, I give it to the Lord and I leave it there. And I wait. And waiting for me is so hard. <laughs> it is so unnatural. Be well balanced and always alert. And this is something we need to consider. Because if we live a romantic Christianity where we think that once we give our life to Christ, there will be no problem. That's what I call romantic Christianity, which is only found in romance, in novels, in fairy tales. Unfortunately, we know that the devil roams around incessantly like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. So, and this is our closure, this is our corporate prayer. This is our main theme. We need to take a decisive stand against him. Against who? Against the enemy. Against the spirit. The evil one. And resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. Strong, vigorous faith. What is faith? Faith is that we do, we do not see, but we know that is going to happen. Faith is sticking to the promises. Faith is giving my problems to the Lord and knowing that he, the Lord will tenderly care for me. For we know that our believing brothers and sisters around the world, we are all experiencing the same kind of trouble. And it's fantastic because at the moment in Malta we have Logos ship, Logos hope. And I met with a beautiful African girl from Zambia and we were sharing and in half an hour she said how she came to the Lord and it's amazing because it's the same more or less same journey I had so it's fantastic because we have the same Jesus we follow the same Lord and we know whether in America whether in Australia whether in South America whether in Israel whether in North Europe or South Europe, whether it's the Mediterranean, anywhere in the world, whether it's Asia, we are all having difficulties. Maybe they are tweaked a bit because of the culture, but we are all having difficulties. 
we are all experiencing the kinds of trouble internationally. And so this is why we need to prepare because when we come together, we pray. In our case, we come together, and I talked about it the other time. We come together through moms and prayer on Thursday. We use a sign, we praise the Lord, we worship the Lord, we confess, and we bring up people for prayer. Then on Friday, it's a different context. We are a larger group, yet we come together, we worship, we praise, we confess. There are various ways. I'm sure you all have experiences which you want to share. And finally, and I will close with this because I've been talking too much. And then after our brief suffering, sometimes it's brief, sometimes it's one afternoon, sometimes it's a couple of minutes, sometimes it's days. We all went through difficulties, we want we all went to through trauma, we all went through death of loved ones, we went through conflict, family conflicts, we went through financial struggles, we went through emotional turbulence. I'm sure we all went through these difficult situations. But then the promise again is that the God of all loving grace, who has called us to share in his eternal glory in Christ will personally and powerfully restore us. What is personally? The Lord in my case, I was preparing for this session. I know how Margaret takes it seriously. So I was asking the Lord over the weekend, Lord, what do I talk about? How do I share? What do you want me to present? And the Lord speaks to me in dreams, very clear dreams. And last night he, he gave me a dream, and it sparked all that I'm talking about. Yes. So the Lord is good personally, because the Lord personally spoke to me how to speak. For me it's dreams, for others it's writing, for others it's singing, for others it's meditating, for others for you as dancing, for, you know, so we all are spoken to in our ways of experiencing life. And not just personally, but also powerfully. Because the Lord is powerful. The Lord is dramatic. And when the Lord speaks to us, we know it's the Lord. It's so personal. The Lord knows that every hair. Imagine, okay, look, look at my hair. <laughs> so I, I I say, wow, Lord, you know how what a visual person I am. You know that I need to be constantly reminded because I forget very often. But the Lord knows us personally and he lifts us up personally and powerfully. Not just lifts us up, but restores us. And the promise is that the Lord makes us stronger. Now imagine if I am a hermit and I am doing it by myself. If your character is like mine, when you get into depression, you don't want to see anyone and you want to be by yourself, it takes much longer. Knowing that I have a sister to pray for me, a mother to pray for me, a father to pray for me, a child who is praying for me, Knowing that I have a church, a community praying for me, it lifts up my spirit. Just knowing that people are there for me in prayer. And the Lord will place and build us up. And finally, and I will close with this, the Lord has all the power needed to do this forever. Eternally, forever. It's such a majestic word that the Lord has the power to do this forever. Amen. And that is my prayer for today. Thank you, Margaret, for this opportunity. Thank you, Amy, uh, for opening the session. And thank you, Philippa, Yuta, Lena, Susan, Angelica, Hannah, Marcia, Monica, Diane, 
Elia Vend. How can you score? <laughs> Bang with me. I I placed some questions. I um I wrote what is corporate fair? How do we do it? Why do we do it? How do we not do it? When do we do it? Who for? Where is it biblically? You will have a another link as to the Old Testament and the New Testament. And what is corporate prayer not for? Basically, it's not for gossip, it's not for judgment, it's for love, loving other brethren. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, if you could put the prayer points in the, in the chat, um, Amy, please. It would be helpful. Maybe we can all um, see how we're going to be led and share from whatever you feel that the Lord put on your heart through what has been shared by Tanya and also what the Lord is really actually speaking to you. And um, in the end, I, uh, we have a, 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 a song to help us to concentrate as well about praying for our land and Israel. Um, but one thing I just want to share with you that the Lord put on my heart is Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? And this is something that the Lord put very much on our hearts when we started our fellowship in this house almost eight years ago. That the Lord will bring those people who have the same heart, who have the same, um, uh, you know, how they want to pray. So whatever Tanya has shared, and I know that on Global Watch we all have the same heart and the same way of um, doing things. We may have different ideas and that is fine because we through community will learn as the Bible says iron sharpens iron and we're sharpening each other. We forgive each other because we're not perfect. We all have our own whatever we have and but through love we learn how to forgive, how to pray for one another how to bless one another, and how to truly honor each other's calling. So, yes, Yuta, thank you. I want to say thank you so much, Tanya, for your openness, for your heart. In this half year, you are growing so much. And what I would write over what you were sharing is knowing God and being, being known by God. What I feel really, it's, uh, we had that this morning in the call, it's really a Peter going uh, out of stepping out of the boat and, um, and walking and then thinking, but ex having experience that underneath are, are the everlasting arms that carry you through. That means a love that doesn't let you go, that you can go learn. It's like a carpet or just his arms that holds you and um, and then it's no more so, so important um, sometimes where the, the places where we, we need to still grow and it's no more this focus. It's, it's all the, the focus about the father that's with us, that has such a tremendous love for everybody, for everybody that's coming to the group. And they just feel this love that uh, this relationship with the father and with the Lord. I mean, that's what we experience. I can testify in mothers in prayer. We were just coming together and, um, and we were um, just um, having this fellowship and this love together. And the Lord was just in our midst. And th then there were just people coming in and they experienced the Lord, the atmosphere, and he could just move. And we were just tools and the Lord was just moving. So, so amazing. So great. Well done, Tanya. Just sharing your heart. I'm so pleased and I'm so thankful. Thank you so much. Yuta, can you put it in prayer for everybody on this call, please? The prayer. Thank you. Yes. Father, I thank you so much. I thank you for this time together. And I thank you that we are all, Father, we are not perfect. 
we are just people. And Father, this testimony, it just shows that we can be just people, but you are our God in our midst. You are mighty. You are our Father that never lets you, us go, that hears, that listens, that want to work with us, that has chosen us, and that has a, an, a love pouring on and into us that's just, um, that's overwhelming everything, Father. I thank you so much that each one from this call and everybody that cannot be here because they're already traveling and whatever, Father, that you bless all of us, all our community, Father, all the Global Watch, Father, that we are so, so, um, so um, open before you, that we know you as a Father that knows us, that knows the depths of our hearts, that we are not afraid because in First John you say that um, that your love um, uh, 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 um, kicks out all the fear. That we just your love overwhelms everything. Your mercy triumphs over judgment. Father, I pray for each one that we know you as this Father that loves us and that we walk on your hand, Father, and that you uh, are just step for uh, step. Father, I ask you for a double portion of faith, just walking, stepping out where you want us to step out, but knowing, Father, this childlike trust, knowing the arms of the Father, they hold us. He's just with us. And everything what's our Father's is ours, Father. I bless each one with this uh, fellowship, with this intimacy with you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rita. Anybody else would like to pray or share your experience of corporate prayer? What is it? Was it not for you? I was thinking of that scripture in James um, 1, where it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. Because a lot of times, uh, especially, you know, the devil will try to bring up when we're trying to pray for others or, uh, you know, just trying to get together in a group. Oh, you're not qualified or you've got all these problems or, or you don't, you know, you've done this and that and that. And he'll always remind us. I mean, there's plenty for, for him to remind us about. Um, and the, this scripture, a lot of times, just comes to my mind. Uh, and as you were sharing, Tanya, too, and later on, and Peter see, says that the devil's like a roaring lion, and it says he's like a roaring lion, and that Jesus is our roaring lion. He's the real lion. And that uh, that we can just, God doesn't upbraid us. As we come to him, as, as we humble ourselves, as we really say, like, you know, God, I need you. I, I need you in every area, no matter what it is, no matter how small uh, I, I need for you. And as we are just uh, pouring out our hearts, and then he meets us. He meets us there because he loves us so much. So I, I just speak over everyone here. I, I just thank you so much for the, the Global Watch and just the heart that people have just to uh, extend graciousness, compassion, uh, and to identify, you know, we're all, we're all there. there. There's none of us that are, you know, up here here and we, we've arrived we're never going to arrive except to arrive at the foot of the cross uh we we're as we're there there's there's we're all on level ground there so i just thank you father for it's just the heart of each individual here i thank you for the power of your word i thank you that you are faithful to honor your word and that you minister out of your word to us to strengthen us in our spirit so that we can turn and strengthen others. And I, I thank you that in our corporate watches that we're not just here to put on a front. We're able to just be honest and open and know that that in that confession, it just, it builds strength in community because we realize, you know, these people are just like me and we need each other and we're going to need each other more and more. So we thank you, Lord. I just praise you and worship you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. One more scripture I would like to bring is from Isaiah 30, verse 15. It says, In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. I'm just going to stop there. And I want to pr pray this for Israel at this point in time. 
when it is the time for the dire straits. When things happen like they are happening in the world, where things are happening, what's happening in Israel, there is nowhere else to go. Nowhere else to go. But to go in quietness in front of the Father, in front of Abba, and pray and wait on Him and seek His face and repent where you need to repent. So this is my prayer for Israel today. And um, so, Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that you have your timing. You have a timeline for the whole world. But Israel is leading us all. Israel is your the apple of your eye. Israel are the people that are the real, your spe special nation, Lord, where the timeline, we can see it in front of our eyes today, Father. We know where we are when we look at Israel. So, Father, we want to pray for Israel today as they are going through this time. And we pray that this time, Lord God, it will be different. We are praying for a breakthrough, Lord God. We're praying that people's eyes will be opened, Lord God. We pray that many will come to know you at this hour, Father. We're seeing people coming back and so many things, and I don't even want to mention them all. Father, we just want to come to you today in quietness and, and confidence that you are with Israel and with us, and you are our strength. And that those who do not know you yet, or have known you but have slidden, backslidden, or know you but not intimate enough, that they will return and they will find a rest in you. Because re Hebrews 4 also speaks about that. So Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will supernaturally be their iron dome that you will supernaturally show them who you truly are, as you have done in many different things. Father, we believe that when we come together to pray according to Matthew 17, 18, all things are possible for those who believe, and those are that things which is bound in heaven, so an earth shall be done in heaven, and you will do according to, as we pray, if we pray according to your will and purpose, Father. So, Father, we know that we're praying according to your will and purpose for the apple of your eye, Israel, especially Jerusalem, Lord God. So, Father, we pray that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. It's not for us to calculate, to think, to manipulate, to be anxious about, but we just pray and rest in you. And we just lift up Israel right now in Jesus name that your will will be done according to your purposes according to your kingdom purpose and according to your timeline in Jesus name amen, amen. anybody would like to pray or share I can. Um, <clears throat> I always uh, was inspired by Acts 4, Peter's prayer. One of the things that I learned from it had uh, Peter dismissed the disciples and said, each of you go to your home and pray this prayer. It would not have been anywhere close to being as powerful, I think, because everyone is struggling with their own faith and their own fears and whatever it may be. But that that Peter stood and, and, and together they prayed then, and it's an example of Matthew 18, right? Where two or three gather in my name um, that uh, uh, they can ask, was it again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. And then that prayer was so powerful. And um, it was powerful for everyone. Everyone came into that prayer, um, though it was so much of it was Peter's faith, but there was an infusion of faith 
and vision uh, of it actually coming into play. So, um, so Father, we we pray, Holy Spirit, that we would um, uh, that this corporate prayer would be protected, Father. That um, that many of us would really enter in. Um, uh, that there would be a greater understanding uh, of your heart, Father, of your heart, your uh, uh, even an expectation from the Ecclesia to do this. This is it. This is where we function together. We're either ministering out together, uh, representing you, serving the poor and all that, or we're coming before into your war room together uh, strategizing together, uh, pushing through and moving heaven uh, together uh, in this um, in this uh, platform, in this um, methodology that you have created. Two or three coming together and praying together in agreement, Lord. Um, and so we we ask that this is like uh, becomes the belief system of the body of Christ. Um, as a whole, Father, that we would understand the same value that you gave to to um, worshiping together, teachings, and uh, listening to teaching together, like um, in Acts two, uh, fellowshipping together. It's right out there, up there with it. Is the prayer? It's one of the four ways that we function, and it cannot be that we're a body and not praying together. Holy Spirit, let this um, truth come back to your ecclesia in each of our nations. Let it come back in each of our cities. Let the ecclesia arise in every neighborhood uh, that um, we would come together uh, and come uh, before you together, Lord, to see our nations shift in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lena. But real quick, um, you know, in the context of what you were sharing, Lena, the context of that passage in Matthew, I, I was looking at this, he was talking about the leaven of the Pharisees and it goes into forgiveness. And, you know, I think part of the leaven of the Pharisees, you got to wonder was unforgiveness and that, uh, you know, we're better than you, uh, putting judgmental spirits on people. And, and, uh, and so that's part of that fellowship. And uh, when, as you get to know people, you have to extend forgiveness and you want forgiveness. And if you don't extend that forgiveness, the father in heaven won't forgive you. So that context is all about corporate because it's in the context of corporate. We're all really good when we're, we're like that little prayer. Okay, God, I want to thank you that I haven't done anything today. It's just wonderful. But now I got to get out of bed and, and get going, you know? then now you're going to be doing the real stuff, interacting with people. And so uh, that's the context of that. And I, I never thought of it like that, that, you know, I think that's part of the leaven of the Pharisees was that unforgiveness and that judgmental spirit, which um, God frees us from. He frees us from that. So anyway, I just want to make that comment. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. No, go ahead. What's that? Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, and in fact, Lana and Amy, latching on to what, just said, what you just said, I had prepared an, an image which talks about love. The love is patient, love is kind. We all know it, but we found out, and we discussed it on Thursday, Margaret and I, that in coming together to pray, we must love. And what is love? We must forgive because as as someone said we are humans humans are bound to make mistakes if we meet three times four times a week we are bound to err against each other and if there is no forgiveness we have seen this in prayer that there is blockage yes. sometimes we are praying and we have to stop and repent yes because we need to forgive and if two people three people the more people there are it's one spirit it's serving the lord if there is one person who has lack of forgiveness it it bars it stops it prohibits 
the prayer, the flow, the flow, the flow of the spirit. And we have experienced this tangibly. The air changes, the spirit changes when there is lack of forgiveness. Thank you. Thank you. You want to pray, Angelica? Uh, <laughs> well, I just want to, to say my experience with corporate prayer, especially uh, on the Zoom calls, I'm pretty uh, new to that, but I always sometimes, because I don't, most of the time I don't pray, and then the devil said, what are you doing here? But I, I really say, I'm one voice and I'm here and I'm one voice and I'm here to support and just to support uh, the speaker or whatever uh, the topic is. And yes, even if I don't say something, but I'm part of it, I'm part of it and I agree with this, um, with what is prayed for. Sometimes I pray, but I'm part of it. And also what has been taught often I take that afterwards and I keep praying in my own time so I just feel I'm one voice one more voice in that group there so that is just my my experience <laughs> yep just that was on my heart to say yep it's one drop at a time Angelica that's right yeah one drop <laughs> yep yeah, all one. And one you. more person, one more person there on the call. That's, that's what I say to the devil. It's just one more. I'm one more. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay. You. Thanks. <laughs> yep. Marcia, would you like to pray? Because then we have a worship song. We'd like to pray. Go ahead, Marcia. Please. Yes. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm pretty new myself. Um, I mean, I have been here a couple of months, but I just want to share something that um, I. I I want to share this scripture um, in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 9, his prayer. Yeah. Um, he, in, uh, it says, the Lord our God is merciful and forgiven, forgiving. Even though we have rebelled against him, we have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws, but he gave us through his servants, the prophets, or Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. So, in this prayer that, that um, I, I just want to talk about, that's, that um, I like the prayers that these prophets, Prophet Daniel does, because he he actually acknowledges that he's also in fault as well. Like he he sinned as well. So if we if we say we have sinned and done wrong, um, and it, it, it's just if you read the whole chapter, I mean chapter nine, the prayer, Daniel's prayer, it just helps you realize how we can help each other and we can also um what's that word we can um, um understand that god has favor is a merciful god and he will forgive no matter what we do wrong we shouldn't um of course repent but the lord will is so merciful he he's so forgiving he he will help us through and he will help us because he we're his children and and um and what it's taught me of Daniel's prayer is that he, yes, as I said before, he he says we have sinned and done wrong, and and he, uh, and and sometimes we, sometimes we, uh, some people may think that they're better than others, but really we're all in fault. There's no one good but Jesus, really, and and so I just want to encourage everybody that um, we just keep um, working hard for Him, and He He will. He will help us and have favor on us when when we we encourage one another. Be humble, like the first Peter five. He talked about being humble um, and and loving one another. And God will, will will give us that peace. So yeah, that's about it, really. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marcia. That's very much so. It is a very 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 powerful prayer. Um, I'd like us now to go to this worship song, Amy, please. Yeah. And then we have our last prayer. It's called Heal Our Land. Amen. Thank you so much. We have God's promises. We have God's ways in front of us. All we need to do is to be obedient and be humble. So um, we're running out of time. Do you want to close in prayer? I don't know if Hannah wants to say something. 
Okay, go ahead, Tom. Thank you, Lord, for this afternoon, this morning, this evening, this night, this hour together, in coming together to you, my Lord, to serve you and to give you glory. We thank you for this opportunity, my Lord. We thank you for these prayer warriors, these watch women and men. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to guide us, to protect us, to provide for us, for you are the most awesome God. You are powerful and you are the protector. Heal our land, my Lord. Heal our bodies. Heal our souls so that we may love one another as you have loved us first. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tanya. Amen. All right. We're already over time, but it was a great experience. We thank you so much for everyone. So unmute, bless each other in the name of the Lord. Bless your day and just the Lord strengthen every one of you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you all at Those of you that are coming. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 B